We have a massive solar storm that hits just in time for Mother's Day and gives us gorgeous aurora as far south as Germany and Arkansas and the USA and as far north as Perth, Australia. And then our telescopes capture the mystery of Mercury's transit just as the sun fires yet another solar storm. Those stories and more in the news this week. The sun has been the center of attention this week, first because of region 2542 that has fired off solar storm after solar storm. Now they haven't really been earth directed, but they've been gorgeous nonetheless. Then we had this massive coronal hole that gave us some really fast solar wind, much faster than we anticipated. And along with some kind of disturbed material in there, this managed to cause a huge uh, solar storm at earth and gave us some gorgeous aurora over Mother's Day. And then like a cherry on top, we get Mercury transiting the sun. You see it right there? And just as it begins to go off screen, the sun fires yet another solar storm, as if to say, bravo. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see despite the fact that we have quite a few active regions on the disk right now, the X-ray flux has stayed at relatively low levels. We've had very few things popping above the seafloor, and that's mainly been because of region 2542, but we don't anticipate really any growth in this region. We're probably just going to stay right about at these levels, which means that amateur radio propagation is kind of being impacted. We're not getting stellar propagation. It's just barely enough to keep us hanging on. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we're actually green for quite some time. We did get a glancing blow from a solar storm back on the 6th, which popped us up to storm levels for just a few minutes, but then back down again. And then, wait for it, BAM! Do you see it right there? That is the Mother's Day storm. It got up to a KP of 7, which is a G3 level. This is a very strong storm, and it actually caught us with our pants down. We all thought when we saw the fast wind that was causing this storm, we thought it was going to be a lot weaker than what it was, but it ended up being very fast. We also think there might have been some transit material in there that causes things to be even more disturbed than they would normally. So wah, it just kept going and kept going and brought us aurora to just amazing regions. And now we're still dealing with the fast wind and that's why it's taking so long to calm down. We're still expecting active conditions and even minor storm conditions at high latitudes over the next day or so for things to calm down and finally return to hmm, pretty much normal. And the aurora from this solar storm was just stunning, and it was all over the world. I got flooded with aurora pictures, and I can't possibly show them all, but I'll start from east to west and show you some of the highlights. For example, we had gorgeous aurora in Latvia and in Denmark. It also reached Friesland in the Netherlands. We also saw aurora as far south as Kiel and Saxony, Germany. It also reached Donegal, Ireland and the Isle of Harris in Scotland. In the UK, it reached Northumberland and Suffolk. Now when we go across the pond, it reached Prince Edward Island. And it was pretty much all over Canada. We had uh, coronas and everything. Here's some beautiful aurora in British Columbia and Ontario, Alberta, Saskatchewan. It just made it everywhere. Here's some gorgeous aurora just to show you how bright it was over Calgary. And here's some in Vancouver. Now in the United States, we had gorgeous aurora in Massachusetts, in Seattle, and it made it as far south as Colorado, Wyoming, Kansas, and even Arkansas. And if we switch to the aurora Australis down south, you saw a beautiful aurora in Canterbury and Christchurch, and also as far north as Perth, Australia. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And when you look at it, can you see that really dark finger that kind of extends down past the middle of the sun? And it's got that light regions inside. Well, that dark region is a very strong coronal hole. And those light regions, those are all active regions inside. And when you have that kind of combination, you get a lot of activity. And what we can tell from Stereo A is that this dark region, it actually has solar wind that's just as fast as the stuff that we're just getting through now, Earth side. So this may yet be another source of a good, strong solar storm coming up in a about a week. Now on top of that, we have another active region and that one has been firing flares. So in about a week, we might actually start seeing some really good activity that's going to rotate Earthside. 
Returning to the disk, you can see region 2542 has been the dominant player. It's been firing off solar storms and a few flares here and there, although region 2543 is trying to catch up. Now, new region 2545 has been kind of growing in fits and starts, so we're watching it too. But right now, none of these players seem to be really an M-class contender. Although, we have some new regions that will be rotating into view here within the next couple days. These are the ones that we saw inside that coronal hole on the backside. So, we were going to be looking at those and watching them closely as they rotate into view, but you amateur radio operators should like the fact that it's probably going to bring us a little bit higher level of solar flux, which should help some amateur radio propagation. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are still coming down from that fast wind that's been lingering since the Mother's Day storm. So NOAA is giving us about a 40% chance of a major storm at high latitudes. We're only really expecting about active conditions, but these things should kind of calm down as the week progresses. At mid-latitudes, we're only expecting about a 15% chance of a minor storm, with uh, things continuing to calm down in through about Friday. We might get a little bump up in activity because we have a solar storm that's kind of going north of us that was fired when Mercury was transiting. But that should, storm should probably miss us, but just in case we might see a little bit of wake effects and that could bump up the activity just a little bit. But all things considered, things should be kind of quieting back in through the weekend. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we really don't have much, so everything is pretty much in the green when it comes to flares. NOAA is giving us about a 5% chance of an M-class flare, and that's mainly because of regions 2542 and 43 like we saw earlier. Now, as far as solar flux is concerned, we barely have enough for de some decent propagation, but that is going to get a little bit better as those new regions that are rotating into the Earth view from the east, those start showing up and contributing. So around the end of the week, things should start looking much better for you amateur radio operators. So the space weather this week has been pretty exciting. Along with the transit of Mercury, we had a gorgeous Mother's Day storm. Now remember, this was for the American Mother's Day. And if you recall, back in March, there was also a solar storm for the UK's version of Mother's Day. So this means Mother Earth has celebrated Mother's Day twice. So way to go, moms. Meanwhile, you Aurora photographers, take it easy. You guys worked your buns off just this past week, so it's time for you to rest and relax and go through some gorgeous Aurora photos. And you amateur radio operators, you can finally start getting back on the bands just in time for the weekend. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.